and we're back with a little tutorial on oil wells so let's get stuck in now first off oil wells consume one kilo of water per second and they output 333 grams of petroleum at the same or crude oil at the same time you can see it here output temperature is the input crude oil at 90 c or hotter if the input material is hotter now since only water can be input Water could be 95, 98, 99 degrees, somewhere around there. So it is possible for the crude oil to come out a bit a little bit hotter, but 90 degrees is what you're probably going to be targeting. It also produces a little bit of heat as well. Now to simulate what's going to be happening new nowadays, uh, I've got 95 degree water over here, liquid pump pumping it in, and we've also hooked it up to a little bit of a power grid. It takes 240 watts to run one of these suckers. So water comes in, this starts to fill up with, or it starts to drop crude oil on the ground. And that crude oil, usually you'll set up a little system like this and pour it out. This was my old design, or one that I stole off the web, I think, probably. Now, one weird thing about them is they also can produce natural gas. You'll see here, this is a fully overpressurized oil well, as in this has been run until it overpressurized. They take about four cycles to do this. Once they're empty, it takes four cycles for them to overpressurize, and normally you remove the pressure at 75%, as in after three cycles. They produce about 20 kilos of natural gas per cycle. A little bit of rough numbers on that. If you have three of these oil wells running, they'll produce about 100 grams of natural gas a second on average. It takes 90 grams to run a natural gas generator. So three of these can power a natural gas generator and one ninth of a second natural gas generator. They don't produce a lot of natural gas, but it does come with an annoying problem if you construct your oil wells wrong. So what we're going to do is have a, a duplicant come in here and vent this oil well. Now, this repurposed duplicate only has a skill level of one in machinery, so they'll be quite slow. The machinery skill does affect the venting process. Now, duplicate starts venting, and the natural gas will start being vented out of the machine. You notice the natural, the natural gas is 227 degrees. Now, that natural gas, its temperature is not affected by the outside temperature, so it will always come out at a ridiculously high temperature. At the same time, you'll see there's 10 kilos of water here. When this machine is being vented, it stops producing crude oil. And because of that, it stops consuming water. Now the water is trapped inside this oil well. And as you'll see, the temperature of it is going up. 93, 94, 95. This, the heat from the surrounding natural gas is soaking into the oil well. And the oil well is dumping that heat into the water because it doesn't care. As you can see, it goes up. Oh, and there you see the natural gas went on top and the water went on bottom. What happened there? Well... If you go to the gas overlay, you'll see we now have steam in the room. Yes, we have steam in the room because the water in the oil well actually flashed the steam. This is one of the big downsides of a design like this. It causes horrible problems. <laughs> so there's several ways to get around this. Now you could do many other th many things, but I just want to point out to a few people. If you've never experienced this issue before, it's fine. But have you ever found water appearing in places that you think it shouldn't have been there? Normally what's happened there is your gas pipe extracting the natural gas. It sucked up the steam. The steam then condensed in the pipe and broke the pipe or damaged the pipe. Your duplicates repaired the pipe, but the steam ended up, you know, as water somewhere where you weren't expecting it. Or it gets ends up inside your natural gas generators and damages the machines. Or th this caught me, I think it was a few hundred cycles before I figured out what was actually going on. I thought it was the water in the pipes that was going in here that was boiling. No. The water in the pipes is fine. It's not even going to notice. As long as it's in an insulated pipe of even igneous rock would do. I've got ceramic here because I'm overkilling it. Additional things is you might not notice it at first because if you have a duplicate with a very high tinkering skill, they can vent the machine much faster. The tinkering skill here increases the venting process by about 10% per point. So if you have 20 points in tinkering, your duplicate is going to vent the machine three times faster than a weaker duplicate. So as long as your good duplicates are getting there, you'll never even notice. They might vent it so quickly that the water starts circulating again before the water in the machine has time to boil. But eventually, at some point, a weak duplicate comes along, like one that doesn't do machinery very often, and they'll end up getting to do the job, and they'll end up with a bunch of steam happening because it took them too long to vent it all. Now, let's come up with a slightly different design that fixes these uh, shortcomings. This is my new preferred design. Uh, this one here gives you a giant pool of crude oil that so that well, it soaks into the oil well, it surrounds the oil well, and it gives it something to dump the heat into. This helps keep the oil well chill when the natural gas is vented. At the same time, I set the pressure here to 20 kilos. In other words, once there's a, until, unless there's 20 kilos of natural gas in here, the gas pump won't extract anything. This results in the natural gas in here ending up a little bit chillier. Oh, I should really put in a temperature shift plate right about there. So that temperature shift plate will help that oil, the 
crude oil coming out of here dump temperature into the natural gas and the natural gas to dump temperature into the crude oil. It just results in a, a much more stable running temperature. All of this combined means that while it might get hotter than 100 degrees outside the oil well, it won't be too much hotter, which should mean it would take longer for the natural, uh, for the heat from the natural gas to soak into the machine. Now, we're almost up to 75% here. Let's see what happens when the duplicant shows up. So we have a duplicant here. Let's check and see what the temperature is like. 89.2. Let's fast forward this a bit. 89.1, 89.2, 89.3, 89.4. It's going up by a tiny amount. And this is with a duplicant with terrible, absolutely terrible machine skills. And quite safe. Let's check the gas overlay. Gas overlay is perfect. We're fine. This, this is a very safe design. It also comes with a built-in liquid lock style build design because the crude oil from here pours down onto the floor, comes across this and pours out the other side and down here. This way you can build a liquid lock into the system. Now normally what you like to do is find your oil reservoirs in hopefully the same space or use gravity to help you and you can usually get all three of them to pour into one spot and then pump them out from there with one pump. You can use multiple pumps if you want, I just prefer not to. In which case, you could just make this a little bit wider and stick in a liquid pump to pump it out when the, the crude oil in here gets to about 750 kilos. That would just make sure the system just keeps running. As you can see, the crude oil well does not be, mind being submerged. Not in the slightest. So you can submerge this thing in an enormous amount of liquid and it will still work, though it has compressed that natural gas quite heavily up there. Just for a bit of fun, I decided to see what would happen if I submerged it and uh, let the duplicate come in to vent it. No difference, it seems. Working just fine. Uh, yeah, you can submerge these things in quite a bit of liquid just to make sure that the, when they vent, they don't uh, overheat. So you do have options. Though, personal preference-wise, this is my preferred design as of now. Currently, I haven't found any bugs with it, but you'd never know. I haven't been using it for a huge amount of time. But it does seem to fit all the bills. You don't lose any water, and the oil well works just fine. Now, uh, one last note on these things. If you're feeding oil from an oil well into an uh, oil refinery, these devices up here, the oil refinery will destroy half the crude oil and output uh, the other half as petroleum. So you put in 10 kilos of crude oil, you get out 5 kilos of petroleum. If you burn that petroleum in a petroleum generator, you'll get about half of your water back. Or, sorry, 60% of the water you put into the oil well back. However, if you're willing to boil your petroleum, you've got a volcano or volcanic magma on your map, or you wait, hold that until space, you can get space metal to use an, a space metal aqua tuner. You can boil your crude oil, turn it into petroleum at a one to one ratio, and that way it's actually a water positive process, meaning you can get an well, sus infinitely sustainable power, or well, 3.3 kilowatts per oil well. Just makes your life an awful lot simpler. Or if you're willing to go absolutely crazy, you can make a sour gas boiler, though they are rather complicated, and that will also be a water positive process. Anyway, hope this was at least mildly informative to you, and uh, good luck.